This is one of multiple videos teaching you network programmability using Python and GNS3. So currently we have two scripts, Python R1 script one and Python S1 script one. What I'll do is copy the S1 script to a file called S1 script2.py. Notice we've changed the extension to be py. If I try and run that script, notice we told that the command is not found. We could still use Python S1 and run the script this way. And notice the changes have been made to the switch. We can see here that the switch was configured. But we may want to improve things by simply running the script as follows. So let's use nano to edit the script. Notice the difference. It's now showing the text and colors, so that's a lot nicer. But what I'm also going to do is a reference Python in the script. Now in Unix, an executable file that's meant to be interpreted can indicate which interpreter to use by having hash, exclamation mark, or pound, bang, if you prefer, at the start of the first line, followed by the interpreter. So as an example, how does the operating system know if this is a bash script or a Python script? This allows us to indicate that information. So I'm gonna save the script. Now when I run it, it's still not running. A good Linux command is clear to clear the screen. So at the moment we have our script, but it's not executable. I'm gonna change the permissions on the script to make it executable. So I'm gonna specify that this script is now executable by adding the executable permission using change mod plus X. Notice it's a lowercase x. Alice now shows us that the script color has changed. So I can now run the script simply by entering its name. And notice the script ran. Now the best way to find files within this directory is to use dot forward slash and then search for the name. Notice when I press tab, it auto completes. But if I do this, it's not gonna auto complete. So get into the habit of using dot forward slash for files in the local directory. I'll break that script. So to prove that this works, nano and specify the script. So let's edit the script. And what I'll do is simply add another a VLAN to our switch. So I'm gonna specify VLAN seven and give it a name of Python VLAN seven. I'll save the script. So on the switch, show VLAN brief. Shows us that we have VLANs one to six configured but cat and the script name shows us that we're gonna add another VLAN to the switch. So I'll run the script, enter a username of David, enter my password of Cisco in this example. Notice we are told that a VLAN seven was created. On the switch, we can see that David connected to VTY zero. Show VLAN brief. We now have a new VLAN configured on the switch. Now remember, I'm not trying to do everything perfectly from the beginning. Babies don't run marathons. Don't try and run a long distance marathon when you start out. Don't try and be the best programmer in the world. Just learn to get something done and then improve or to use a developer term, iterate your program and refine it and make it better as you learn more. So one of the things we may wanna change here is to no longer embed our password of Cisco. So we could delete those two lines. 
Now before we delete stuff, let's create a backup. So copy S1 script two, and let's call it S1 script two backup file. So we now have a backup of our file. If we have a problem, we can always restore or copy back that backup file. So nano again, and let's edit our script. So what I wanna do here is I wanna delete these two lines. So control K cuts those two lines, and I'm gonna save the script. Now that's not gonna work unless we do this change on the switch. So on the switch, we wanna change the VTY line to provide privileges as soon as we log in. So what we'll do is do that on the user account. So we've got a user called David, and we'll say user David privilege 15. And to just prove that it works, show IP interface brief shows us the IP address of the switch. So let's tell it to ourselves and ensure that it works manually first. So David, it's a bit of a typo there. Can't spell my own name. Try again. Notice we are already in privilege mode, so we can type conf t straight away. So we don't need the option enable. Show line shows us that no one's connected at the moment. Let's try and run our script. So David Cisco. Looks good. We can see that David logged into the switch. So now we are no longer embedding usernames and passwords in our script. We are being prompted for that information when we run the script. So just to prove the point once again, I could copy this configuration and paste it in. And let's create VLAN 8 on the switch. Save the script, run it again. David, password is Cisco. Looks good on this side. Telnet was successful to the switch, show VLAN. We can see that a VLAN 8 was created on the switch. So let's look at our script again. Now this is not efficient. This is not a good way to write programs where you've got to duplicate code. It becomes very difficult to scale. As an example, if you wanna add 100 VLANs to the switch, you're gonna end up having to copy and paste and then manually edit a large amount of text. That often leads to mistakes, often leads to other problems. That's not something we wanna do. So in the next video, I'll show you how to tidy this up and use loops to improve our text. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please like it and please subscribe to my YouTube channel. I wish you all the very best.